Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and Company, and today I want to give you guys a look at the 40 gallon reef aquarium. I've been getting a couple of questions about this tank, so today I'm going to be give you guys a look at how simple this tank is, all the equipment that I use, and um, I just before I get into that, I want to give you guys a look at where this tank started from. I went back into some of my older videos and just look at the huge transformation this tank has had. This tank is over two years old, and um, the transformation is absolutely amazing and this tank is just getting more and more easier to take care of so here's a look at where I started from with this aquarium Okay everyone, so here we are two years and a couple of months down the road and everything in this tank is thriving. I originally bought all the corals as frags and now they're all full size. In this tank I have all the main types of corals. I have LPS, SPS, soft corals and I have a few anemones in there and everything is doing nicely. So now I want to give you guys a look at the equipment that I use to keep this tank up and running. You'll be surprised at the little bit of stuff that I use for this tank to keep it the way it is. So first I want to give you guys a look at my filtration. So for filtration I simply have an AquaClear 75. Um, this is the same filter I started off with and you can see two and a half years later it still has a pretty strong flow rate and the water is still crystal clear. I love the AquaClear brand because all their filters have a good flow rate and also they hold a decent amount of media which helps keep the tank nice and crystal clean. As far as media, nothing fancy. I just have regular, a regular bag of carbon. I have two sponges in here. Um, obviously I'm get, I don't want to get it too dirty but I have two sponges in there and then I also have a bag of um, those white pebbles. I don't know what they do. What they do, they came with the filter. Those little white pebbles, I really don't know the purpose. But yeah, I have some of those in there as well. But yeah, the AquaClear is an awesome filter and I don't just use it on my 40 gallon reef aquarium. Throughout the fish room you can find different tanks with that same filter. And it does a, a pretty good job and is a very trustworthy brand of filtration in my opinion. So yeah, I have an AquaClear 75 for filtration on this tank and that's it. So when it comes to lights, I have a Galaxy Hydro LED. Bought this on Amazon for about $200. This same type of light is they call it the Chinese LED because it is, it's from China and a bunch of different sellers claim it and put different names. So mine is called the Galaxy Hydro but you can go on Amazon, eBay and you can find very similar lights with different names. Um, but yeah this costed about $200, very simple to use and as you can see it does a good job growing my corals. One thing I would do over if I had the chance was maybe get another one and that's because this light is about a foot and a half in length. My tank is about three feet long, so you know when it comes to light spread. If I had a longer light, or if I had two of these lights, I would be able to have more growth of coral on the, the further ends of my tank. But you can see most of the growth is in the middle, and that's because the light is centered in the middle. So if I was able to change one thing about my light, my lights, I would get either a longer one, or just double it up so I could have more light power or more light effect and these um, further ends of the tank. But other than that, no complaints. I get a lot of growth and the price wasn't too much. Next, we have these two things back here. Now, these were just added a couple of months ago. I did a video on them. These are DIY refugiums. Um, really, they're breeder boxes from Marina. And I just took the breeder boxes and I put some 
macroalgae in them. So I have the macroalgae grown in both of these. And you know, the algae is competing with nuisance algae in an aquarium, so that's good. Um, they're not really having a dramatic effect, but you know, a small effect is still an effect. And I have those two on there, they're helping battle my algae. And after that, I have a heater down here. This is the second heater that I'm going through. These heaters, I think in the salt water, they corrode a little bit easier. The last one malfunctioned and destroyed half my tank. I lost a lot of fish and a lot of corals because my last heater just blew up on me. So I do think when it comes to heaters, you definitely want to go with a good brand. Right now, I'm using an Aquion heater and it's been doing good for a couple of months now. But yeah, my last one malfunctioned and um, it just destroyed everything. So when it comes to heaters, you definitely want to pay attention to what brand you use because in salt water, heaters can be on very fragile. After that, I have two circulation pumps. I think the three main important things with, with the reef aquarium are one filtration, two lights, and three circulation pumps or whatever you're using for flow. I have one over here to the left and I have one to the right. The one to the left is a larger has more strength to it. I forgot the amount of gallons per hour, but it's, it's bigger than that one. And I have it in an upward direction so that it provides a lot of surface agitation. The same thing with that one. And um, pointing upward, that one pointing upward, it creates like a, a, a little spin effect in the middle. As you can see, I have a little bit of debris. When I shook the filter around, the little bit of debris that came into the tank, you can see um, the direction that it's going in. And that's how I get an idea of the direction or the course of the flow in this tank. It's hard to describe, but this pump points upward, that one points upward, they kind of make a spiral and you get all different types of flow directions. But flow is very critical in a reef aquarium. Um, plays a huge role when it comes to the growth and um, overall health of your corals. But yeah, that's all I have when it comes to equipment. And um, as you can see, my tank is thriving. Now you see a lot of people, they go all out, they buy just a lot of fancy stuff. I'm not saying that fancy stuff is unnecessary. It definitely will make your reefing experience easier. However, with me, I just, firstly, I couldn't afford it at the time because I have all these others aquarium, other aquariums. I didn't want to um, spend too much on this one tank because I have so many other tanks to care about. So I didn't want to spend too much money. So that's one of the reasons why I went low tech. And two, because before, if you look in some of my older videos of this reef aquarium, I did used to use a protein skimmer, but that thing wasn't working for me for like after the first few months. So once I saw that the prote protein skimmer wasn't working, I decided to plug it out. It plugged out for about six months and I saw that it was no real disadvantage in my aquarium. So I just took it off completely and um, no problems. The tank has been actually doing better without it. So um, it all depends on your tank and your Pacific wants, but I, I'm using a very simple setup and I'm, I'm having success. Now I want to take you around the tank and give you a tour of some of the corals in this tank. I'll start from the left. And right here we have a Duncan coral. This coral has 20 heads and is continuously growing. I feed this coral twice a week with mysis shrimp. I have to feed each head individually. And I love this coral, one of the first corals that I started with. I love the flow of it and just the overall neon colors. When I have the, just the blues on, on the light up there, just the blue lights, um, this one gives off a nice green glow, so it looks pretty cool. Above that, I have an unidentified species of green star polyp. I bought it, it was labeled as green star polyps, but I'm sure that back there is green star polyps, and this right here probably isn't a family, but the Pacific type, I'm not sure. Back there, I have a mix of zoas, the Pacific name, I can't tell you, but they do look awesome. I have about five different types, and they are growing pretty well. Above that, I have two different types of Montipora, one red, one green. The red is kind of growing over the green um, and it's starting to kill off that part that's in the shadow because it's lacking light. And then if I take you above, up here you can see, you could kind of see the flow is kind of rough, but the green is now starting to grow within the red and that's starting to overlap the red. So right now the Montipora are trying to fight each other, but um, it's a very slow fight and it's kind of cool looking. I love how the green and the red is mixing. So hopefully they don't kill each other, but for now I'm enjoying that little battle. Over to the right, that little orange cap in the middle, you can see kind of right there, that is a Montipora digitata frag. 
Up here I have green star pileups. If you look at some of my older videos, actually the first part of this video, there was a clip showing this um, magnetic rock. It was a tiny little frag of green star pileups and look at it now, it's grown on a rock and now it's starting to grow on the back glass and eventually I can imagine it's gonna start growing that way. And I'm gonna have my own 3D background full of green star pileups, so that's awesome. Right here is Devil's Hand Leather Coral. Originally I bought it. Once again, in the beginning of this video, you can see when I first got this coral, very small. And now it's about seven to eight inches in length and continuously growing. Yellow polyps just taking over this aquarium. They started off, once again, one small polyp. And look at them now. They're everywhere. They're kind of growing aggressively because they're just taking over corals. They killed a few corals by burying it, but um, my Platinum Clownfish love it. He liked to host this um, this part of the yellow polyps. Back there I have some green green polyps. These things, green bottom polyps, these things just last forever. I had these things in a tank sometimes. They were under rocks and I brought them from under rocks like months later and they recover. So very hardy corals. Over here I have trumpet coral doing nicely. I bought it with two heads. You can see now it has about seven going on eight heads. Up there I have another version of trumpet coral. Right here is in a family of trumpet coral, just a different name, I forgot it. Right here I have a mini carpet anemone. Over here, this is a, a new polyp, I just picked this up a couple of months ago. Glove polyps I think it's called. Over here I have a rock flower anemone, another rock flower, some purple mushroom corals, a gal galaxia coral to the right of the tank I have some euphila, a frog spawn in the center, and on the outside I have two hammer corals. Someone recently asked me how do I get so much success on my corals, how do I get so much growth? And I think the majority of my growth and success came when I started considering placement. Um, before I used to base where I put my corals on what I read online. But you know, you really gotta know your tank and just know how everything works and it's just a matter of experimenting. You know, we all have different aquariums with um, just different levels. I mean, as far as lightning, when it comes to reef aquariums, lightning is very important. And you know, I have my light about, what is this, a foot and a half above my tank. You may not have it that much and that's gonna play a huge role when it comes to the effect your light has on your corals and the overall light intensity of your tank as far as how much is highlight to you compared to how much is highlight to me. So every tank has a different position. Every tank has a different, um, I'm gonna say standard of what is highlight, of what is low light. Every tank has a different standard of what is high flow, what is low flow. I think it's just a matter of you experimenting with your corals, moving them around the tank and seeing wherever they do best. And wherever they do best is where you leave them. Like for example, I read a lot of times that Zoa corals don't need a lot of flow and sometimes they don't need much light before I used to keep them down here at the bottom and they did not grow at all then one day I decided to bring them up higher and you can see now they're spreading like crazy same thing with these trumpet corals someone told me that well not someone I read online that trumpet corals don't really like a lot of light also they don't like a lot of flow same thing I bring these guys a little bit higher and increase their flow and they're growing same thing with green star polyps this is said to be a core that don't prefer a lot of light or too much flow. And this tank, I mean, this coral is getting the most light because it's growing the highest in the tank. And it's also getting a lot of flow in the direction of um, my two circulation pumps. And this is the most growth I've ever seen on this coral. So it really all depends on you experimenting with your corals and seeing where they do best. If you come to the point where you just can't find a specific point in your tank where your corals do best, Maybe you gotta do some manipulating to your light or to your flow. It's just a matter of experimenting. I really don't have a fixed answer of how I find success in a saltwater tank. It's just a matter of experimenting and finding what works best for you. Okay everyone, so that's been a look at my 40 gallon reef aquarium. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments concerning this tank, let me know in the comment section below and I will answer you when I get the opportunity. If you have not known, I have a fish room full of all different types of freshwater fish. Very interesting, so subscribe and you'll get a lot more of that. And um, I'm gonna leave you guys with 
this. That's the new one. You did not update. Come on, you're late. It's Come on. Update. You're late. Where? 